we are back for the second quarter of the Paddock the Goals. I am going to introduce Savannah Nichols and Keely Allen from Witchy Proof P12 College. And we have Chloe back from Birch at P12 College, who's going to stay on the ground to extend her lead into the second quarter. So I'll welcome Chloe again, as well as Savannah from Witchy Proof, who is in year 10 and is currently studying the advanced VCE year 11 subject of philosophy. She is a member of our school council, has her gun licence and enjoys water skiing in the summer. Keely is also in Year 10 and is the current youth group president of Witchy Proof. She is also studying an advanced VCE subject, business management, and is also on school council. So it's wonderful to have you here with us today. So the first question is for you, Keely. Um, during the October 2022 flood events, many people evacuated from places like Charlton and other areas to the relief centre that the Bullock Shire Council established at the Recreation Centre at your school, which you proved P12 College. The wider community of Bullock are so grateful to your college and local businesses and the lead agencies such as Victoria Police, SES and Red Cross for their support during this time. They were there for some time. It was around exams time and it was a busy time for all the school students. What was your experience and the other students at your school and what did you learn from it? Well, I guess because it was in our school stadium, it didn't affect us 100%, but um, I think the students got a bit out of it considering we learned like, what sense of community our school has, that we're, that we're willing to help, you know, um, role models for other people, especially the younger kids in the school. Um, we were aware that they were in there, but we didn't have a lot to do with them as school kids because the stadium's only on one side of our school, I guess. But yeah, I think there was a bit to, to take from it in the like, community side of it all. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's definitely like in times of need, uh, small communities always come together and they're really strong. So it's it's really good uh, that everyone jumped on board to support that. So Savannah, uh, what was your experience uh, and what did you think of it all? It's got to be a bit different having um, a heap of different people at your school that aren't students. Uh, so what? how did you find it? Yeah, look, well, um, obviously, you know, as a student, it wasn't a lot of interaction between them, but Outside of school, um, my mother, she's on the Shire, so often she would go in and, you know, volunteer to serve food and stuff like that. So I did go in a couple of times and help her and made um, friends with, there was a new Indian family, I won't mention the names on here, but um, they were really nice people and it was it was obviously quite sad to see people scared like that. Um, it was, I don't know, it was great though, like it was, really opened us up as a school and a community to get to help people out and experience something like that. It was it was new. Yeah, and I think back to like when I was little, there was the 20, 2010 floods uh, in Horsham where I'm from and when that happened, we came together and we sandbagged the whole street all together and all that sort of thing. So it's in times of need, it's great to see how the community comes together and supports one another. Uh, so I only just got my P plates in December last year after completing year 12 and I literally started my job the next week at Bull Oak Shire. I was driving from Horsham, which meant I had to get up at 5.30am and be at Bull Oak Shire offices in Witchy Proof at 8.30. Some of the roads I drive on are just awful after the floods and I soon discovered the car that I saved up all these years was not going to be able to manage these atrocious conditions combined with the prospect of running into other hazards like kangaroos uh, that are scattered all through the place. Uh, I collected a few photos uh, as well as I drive over these uh, bad patches of road. Fortunately for me, Bullock Shire offered me more flexible working arrangements and which included a later start and earlier finish and some working time from home, which I found fantastic. So taking all that into consideration, uh, how many kilometres do you guys travel each week? So we'll start with Chloe. Uh, so I live 16 k's out of Birchett, so it's about a 20-minute drive, and then I have to take the bus in five days a week, which would add on more. So I think I calculated about 120, but also like I have to work on weekends, so that would add more, and yeah. Yeah, so it quickly adds up and I think that's what I came to find when I started working over here, how quickly the time actually added up when I started travelling more and more. Uh, so, Keely and Savannah, how about you? How many uh, kilometres do you think you guys travel on each week, factoring in going to sports, going to school and all that sort of thing? So, I live in town, 
So the school's convenient for me, not too many Ks. I walk to school every day. Um, but playing sport, especially in a small town, if I want opportunities, I have to travel outside of our shire and our area. I uh, sport on Saturdays in the North Central League, not too far, but, um, you know, Sea Lake and Wedderburn, for example, are further than any home games. And then I play hockey in Bendigo two to three times a week. So Ks add up then. But other than that, I'm not too bad. Um, I'm similar to Keely. I also live in town, so it's, yeah, walking to school every day. Um, but I don't have any sporting commitments anymore. On Saturdays I work, which is about 20, 30-minute drive over to Charlton. Um, other than that, I do casually work out along the Bort Road, actually. Um, I work on a pig farm and that obviously that road's shocking, but... Yeah, look, I don't, I don't do that much travelling um, at all, really. Yeah, and I think that the most common thing here is that it's always you've got to find a ride. There's not the possibility of there just being a bus or something to go. So that takes us into our next part, which is a lot of these travel issues wouldn't be an issue if we lived in a regional city with public transport. There is such a build-up to get your pee plates in country areas because they represent your freedom to go where you choose. No longer are you completely dependent upon your family or friends or carers to take you where you want to go. You actually get to then drive yourself wherever you want to go. Travelling at night, there are many, uh, many are giving it a miss due to the poor state of our roads because there are so many hazards like kangaroos and potholes all through the place and it's not easy to see when it's dark at night. Combined with the escalating fuel prices, it has become increasingly challenging for us to attend the extracurricular activities and social gatherings we all want to. It inevitably restricts our opportunities to encourage and connect with our peers and ultimately affects our mental health and well-being. So again, what would you say to our policymakers who have not yet contemplated the magnitude of these circumstances and their ramifications on the well-being of youth in this region? Being so isolated out in regional areas like driving is so important so we need like good roads and these roads are just dangerous so maybe just putting up signs isn't enough yeah so possibly yeah so the signs aren't actually really helping the roads as such i guess is what you're getting at and you want to see more money say spent on roads so we can better better help uh keep them maintained and keep everyone safe while they're using uh, the road infrastructures through Victoria. So how do we keep people engaged? What's your thoughts? How can we better support the community in that way? I think there just needs to be more public transport available because activities and community events are going to be more popular if they were more accessible to everyone. Yeah, so opening up the opportunity of public transport in regional Victoria would really help more and more people travel and do more of their, say, sports and recreations that they want to do. Yeah, that's good. So I'd like to thank you all for coming in for our second quarter. So thank you, Keely and Savannah from Witchy Proof P12 College, as well as Chloe from Birchip college so thank you very much for tuning in and we'll kick off the third quarter very soon